Hello, uh, this video is about water movement through a root, uh, considering all the cell types that are involved. So pointing out the obvious structures that we need to know about, first of all we've got the root hair cell on the outside which provides contact with the water in the soil. We've then got the parenchyma cells, the cortex of the root. Uh, then we've got the endodermis which is critically important. Uh, and then beyond that, the xylem, which will transfer the water up the stem. I've also shown the phloem, although that isn't important in this video. If we look close up, the other area uh, that I ought to port point out at this point is the Casparian strip, uh, which has a, a key role to play. So, starting back at the root hair cell. Water is going to travel into the root hair cell by osmosis because the water potential in the soil is going to be close to zero and the water potential in the root hair cell is going to be more negative than that so water will transfer across the membrane. So how does the water move across the membranes? Well this diagram helps show that. Uh, if you consider each square to be a water molecule, water can move either directly through the lipid phospholipid bilayer uh, by diffusion or can pass through protein pores. Uh, aquaporin for example is the name of one of these um, and they just pass through the middle of the protein by facilitated diffusion. There's no energy involved. Water is still moving in both directions but there is a net movement from high concentration to low concentration. Um, this is a little diagram, computer model of what we think aquaporin looks like. So as you can see, water molecules just pass through the center of the protein and can move in both directions, but the net movement is from high concentration to low. So the next question is, how does water move from the epidermis, the outside of the root, to the endodermis on the inside? Well, it has to pass through the parenchyma cells, and there's two ways that that happens. Uh, and this is where we have the involvement of the Casparian strip that we mentioned earlier. So, pathway number one. This is the apoplastic pathway. Apo means away from, and plast means main structure or form. So this pathway is away from the main part of the cell, it's away from the cytoplasm of the cell. Uh, now look at this picture of the structure of the plant cell wall. Uh, as you can see there's lots of tubes and pipes and things within there but there's also lots of space and water can quite easily flow along that space. In fact the cell wall is almost like, um, you can imagine it like a canal with pipes and sticks and rods in the water can perfectly easily flow along that and that's exactly what happens as shown here water is moving along the cell walls and it gets to the endodermis when it gets to the endodermis it meets what we discussed earlier the Casparian strip which is like a waxy blockage across the cell wall water cannot pass through that so water has to be diverted into the cytoplasm of the endodermis Pathway 2 is the symplastic pathway. Now, sim means within or together, and plast means main form or main structure. So, this is water traveling through the cytoplasm, the main part of each plant cell. So, here we show water moving from cytoplasm to cytoplasm of neighboring cells through tiny little linking structures called plasmodesmata. So, there's a continuous pathway of cytoplasm from the epidermis to the endodermis. Here we see water arriving at the endodermis which is where the water from the apoplastic pathway also ended up uh, and we now need to discuss what happens from this point. So how does water move from the endodermis into the xylem? Well up until this point water has moved either because of uh, cohesive forces between water molecules pulling them along the apoplastic pathway or by water moving to increasingly more negative uh, water potential areas. This can't happen anymore to move into the xylem 
uh, because the xylem is just a tube of water. So to encourage water movement into the xylem, the xylem has to have a lower water potential. So that happens by transport of salts by carrier proteins into the xylem. This requirement of salt movement is why the water in the apoplastic pathway was directed into the cytoplasm. The, the water has to then move from the cytoplasm across the membrane uh, into the xylem and it can only do that by osmosis if salt concentration in the xylem is higher than in the cells. So salt is actively transported into the xylem which requires energy and this creates the root pressure of the water in the xylem which then pushes the water up the stem. So that then completes the pathway of water from the soil to the xylem. Have a look at these little reminder notes and revise this thoroughly.